wipe your whiskers. Secret Eaters is back. With a quarter of the UK now clinically obese, we hold the crown as the heavyweight champions of Europe. 15 stone two. <gasps> 17 and a half stone. Five and a half stone heavier than, than I want to be. Just how many of us are in denial about what we really eat? I'm going wrong somewhere and I just don't know where. I eat healthy things. I don't understand why I've got an eight stone. It's literally like carrying a human being on my back. Our PIs and covert cameras have been catching the nation scoffing everywhere. And I mean everywhere. I've got a tracker on Tracy's car. Even if we lose her in traffic, we can find out where she is. And when you see what we've uncovered... They're on the move. The truth will really knock you out. Oh, yes. In the Secret Eaters incident room, we'll be plating up the truth and nothing but... Surprise! Oh, Hello, ladies. Oh, no. no! Because if you really want to lose weight, you need to know how you're putting it on. I just want to die now. Oh, please don't put it in your mouth. Please don't put it in your mouth. It's, it's going in. Are we hiding the true extent of our mindless eating from our loved ones and ourselves? I can't believe you did that. This is Secret Eaters. I've got to take you on the chin, haven't I? Really? Which one now? <laughs> oh, no, very nice. <laughs> Scotland, home of haggis, 15 Michelin starred chefs, and unfortunately a deep fried chocolate bar. In fact, Scotland is second only to the United States when it comes to the obesity tables. So has Scotland really become Scotland? I'm on my way to meet two lovebirds in the heart of Edinburgh. 26-year-old Alan and 22-year-old Emma have been together for four years, but their relationship is now starting to feel some unwanted strain. I would say that our weight gain has had an effect on our relationship because we're both so self-conscious about it. I want to look good for Emma and if I'm sitting there with this belly sticking out, I feel like I might be attractive to her. When we first met, we were both quite slim. In the last four years, I've put on roughly six stone. Stay-at-home mum, Emma, has struggled to shift the baby weight following the birth of their child two years ago. I think I eat less than I should. I maybe eat two meals a day. It's small portions that I have. I have tried absolutely everything possibly imaginable <laughs> to lose weight and I can't find a way to solve it. It's, it's like a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> you can solve one side, but the rest just don't fall into place. Dorman Allen is also mystified by his expanding waistline. Once a week, we do treat ourselves to a takeaway, but I don't see how the once a week treat it can affect my weight. Try and trim the fat off the meat that we use. Just trying to add the same fruit and veg to everything, but try and make a portion of veg larger than the meat. But, again, okay, it doesn't really seem to work. This is a mystery I'm determined to solve. Can I come in? Yeah, of course you can. Thank you very much. It is so nice to see young love together. <laughs> Look at you. It's just, it's lovely, Alan, because you're, you're always kissing her. It's like, oh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> How did you two meet? We met in a nightclub. Oh, yeah. Wow, OK. And so when you first met, what size were you both? Well, I was a size eight. I was very small, very petite. Oh, wow. <laughs> God, what a great picture that is. <laughs> Thank you. What is going on? Tell me. Well, part of the reason is pregnancy. I kind of felt that because I was pregnant, I, was, I could eat for two. But then after pregnancy, it just kind of stayed the same. Even if I ate healthy, I wouldn't lose the weight. It just kept going up. Emma's cooked up a plan for her and Alan to shed those extra pounds. But despite her best efforts, all she's serving up is the bitter taste of disappointment. I'd say that my diet is as healthy as it can be. I've got plenty of veg, plenty of meat, plenty of fruit. I mean, I had raisins to curry, you know, I'm not, I'm not exactly holding back. So I, I don't know um, how much healthier I can get, really. What's the reason for your weight gain? Before, I used to believe that, you know, like, I could eat anything as long as I worked it off. Yeah. In the past couple of years, I've not really had a chance to do that. When Alan isn't busy throwing his weight around on the doors of Edinburgh's busiest bars, he's even busier worrying about it. I'll be always trying to keep up with the other doormen. I don't want to be the one you know, huffing and puffing behind them. OK, so you want to be fit, yep. you want to be trim, yep. 
You want to be professional. Yeah, because my job kind of depends on it. OK. You so know what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is that moment of truth. I'm getting the evil black scales out. Yeah. Oh, no. Are you ready? <laughs> ready as I'll ever be. If I'm to help, I need to know exactly what Emma and Alan weigh. OK, guys. How are you feeling? Nervous. So, Emma, you think you'll be between... 14 and 15 stones. OK. Step on. 15 stone 12. Oh, dear. Hop on, lad. Right, come on then. 16 stone 4. Wow. <laughs> Are you OK? Yeah. Just uh, now know how much I've got to lose. Alan doesn't normally live with Emma, but he's moved in for the surveillance period. This devoted couple have agreed to let us monitor them 24-7. In order for us to be able to help you, I need you to eat normally for the next okay. week. Of course, yeah. Will you promise me? Promise. Promise. To get an idea of what they think they eat, we asked Emma and Alan to complete a food diary over the course of a normal week. Alan claims a healthy average of just over two and a half thousand calories a day. The daily amount for a man with lots of fresh veg on most days. In Emma's diary, she listed home-cooked meals with plenty of fresh fruit and veg, making her calorie intake come in at a healthy 2,100 calories a day. The cameras are locked and loaded inside the apartment, but we need to know what Emma and Alan are eating outside too. So I've called in my own calorie commandos. All right, boys. AKA Duncan, me and Cameron Gowlett. Are you in position? Yeah, I'm in position. These guys are two of the best PIs in the business. It's delivery time. They'll intercept any illicit dietary dealings and get friends undercover in an attempt to discover if Emma and Alan are secret eaters. It's just gone 3 p.m. The surveillance is up and running, and Alan is hot footing it to the supermarket to buy ingredients for the evening meal. Exactly as his food diary suggests, Alan is buying lots of fresh veg. It seems there's nothing else to check out here. Back home, it's soon time for a fajita fiesta as Emma starts slicing and dicing a home cooked meal fit for her Scottish king. I can't touch you with my hands. This high-protein fajita should keep Emma and Alan fuller for longer, as it El Paso's as a healthy meal. No incriminating evidence yet. So for the next few days, we'll keep the cameras rolling and eyes peeled as we try to solve the mysterious case of Emma and Alan's weight gain. But this devoted couple are not the only ones we've been watching. Here at this London plumbing company, around 90% of the staff eat in the canteen, with a massive 70% usually settling for a humble 350-calorie bacon butty. So today, we've rigged the place with cameras, and the chef has cooked up some calorific treats. A Mexican chilli at around 450 calories, coupled with a collection of tempting toppings at around 50 calories. Plus, a modern twist on an old favourite, Yorkshire pudding roast beef wrap, coming in at a huge 850 calories. But which will our hungry workforce prefer, their usual bacon butty or the sizzling new additions? Looks like the chilli is the hot favourite for this amigo, who's piling it on his plate. Watch out, he may need some pressure relief. And when it comes to tickling the taste buds, this guy must be having a right laugh. Cheese on your beef, sir. Your downpipe and guttering might need an emergency call-out later. With the first course complete, this guy navigates the nibbles and heads straight to the chocolate. With generosity like that, he could be employee of the month. We'll find out later which meal comes out on top. The number of overweight adults and children in Scotland has continued to rise in recent years, with latest figures suggesting 61.9% of people are overweight or obese. And contributing to that big statistic is 22-year-old Emma, who clocks in at nearly 16 stone. And her 16 stone four partner, Alan from Edinburgh. Our devoted duo are dumbfounded by the digits, as neither think they overeat. 
I think I eat less than I should. To crack the mysterious case of this calorie-confused couple, they've agreed to go under round-the-clock surveillance for five days. Alan's just arrived at work. We're going to keep our eyes on him. Do they eat more than they realise? RPIs monitor every mouthful in an attempt to discover if they could be secret eaters. Emma and Alan think their time of being watched is over, but sorry, guys. Even though you're now in London, the cameras are still rolling and that metre is running. They've been fed a line about meeting our dietitian Lynn Garten in this swanky apartment, and our trusting pair took the bait. We've rigged the flat with hidden cameras, and our friendly hostess, Miss Honeytrap, is on hand to make Emma and Alan feel right at home. But that's not all. Concealed behind this fake wall is our incident room, where the true extent of Emma and Alan's scoffing has been served up with a big dollop of all our surveillance on the side. Let's hope they don't spot the subtle culinary clues. Emma and Alan still think they eat healthily. There you go, have fun. And have no idea about the evidence we'll be dishing up. where it is all been going on. Here are your food tables. If you come <laughs> over here, guys, yeah. this is our surveillance board. Yeah. <laughs> Get right in, have a good look. Eating with intent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because we were following you 24-7. You were being tailed by our private investigators. Oh, no. So we've caught you on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere, even when you <laughs> were out. If you come this way, I'm about to give you a big, fat reality check. <laughs> <laughs> and first in line at the serving hatch of honesty is 26-year-old Alan, a doorman who wants to show his excess weight the exit. <laughs> do you remember when we met, you said to me, look, you know, me and Emma, yes, we do have... The odd takeaway, and I think you said you had one, was it once a week? I don't see how the once a week treat uh, can, af can affect my weight. Nothing wrong with having the odd treat? Shouldn't really affect your weight that much? That's what we thought. <laughs> yeah. Or should it? It's Thursday evening, and Emma is in search of something more elusive than the Loch Ness Monster for her Scottish sweetheart. Where is this bloody <laughs> <laughs> Checking every single place. <laughs> oh, no. Burn it. Finally, Emma has been able to track down this mythical sounding dish. What one? <laughs> what? There's different ones. Yeah. yeah. Tuna meal hoagie. No. Curry hoagie. No. Spice mince. No. No. Spice chicken. No. Tikka. No. Chicken tikka. No. Kebab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Salad. Just a healthy section. <laughs> Food's ordered. With a sighting of the hoagie reported, P.I. Duncan is determined to find out what goes into this mysterious meal. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> We've been following a couple in the area. Can you tell me exactly what they ordered, please? They ordered kebab meat hoagie, which contains cheese, <laughs> chips and lamb dollar. Oh. Oh. How can you put that in your system? I've never seen it prepared before. With the hoagie fully loaded, RPI has a cunning plan to make sure this monster creation reaches its destination. <laughs> I'm going to wear a helmet camera. <laughs> and I'm going to deliver it to them. I think it's one of the other delivery guys wears a helmet. It's delivery time. As Duncan dares to get up close and personal to Alan, 
he's in danger of blowing his cover. Uh, hurry up, delivery. Oh, no way. 1545. Oh, they caught. Oh, this. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Alan wastes no time getting stuck in. Can't the picnic. <laughs> <laughs> and in just 15 minutes, the hoagie is well and truly extinct. Oh, man. <laughs> Dietitian Lynn Garten has got her hands on Alan's hoagie to unwrap those hidden calories. He starts off not too badly with a wrap at around 170 calories, but then he adds a load of high fat fillings. His chips at 500 calories, the Donna meat kebab, 570 calories, and finally the melted cheese. It's 250 calories. This takeaway treat will have cost Alan one and a half thousand calories. Now I've seen some food sites in my time. <laughs> a hoagie. Yeah. It's different things which I like, just put together. OK, Lynn, please fill us in with a hoagie. <laughs> the amount of fat an average man should have a day is around 95 grams. And that's the upper limit. It's not the recommended amount, it's yeah. the upper limit. And in that hoagie, there was around 95 grams. And to put that into context... <laughs> oh, no. This is the amount of fat Ugh. that you had. Oh. So, oh. Alan? I'd like to present you oh. Oh. an alternative to your hoagie. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't oh, like it. Let's have a look. Oh, no. Oh. Are you serious? Oh. I told you it's bad for you. Countless times. That's the thing, it's like, I do know that it's bad, but it's just, it's filling and it's enjoyable. That's why I have it. Alan is a furtive fat fan, someone who enjoys a fatty treat but doesn't think about the consequences of what he eats. If this is you, be aware that pre-prepared food can contain high levels of fat. Aim to cook with leaner meat, cook thick, straight chips rather than French fries, as they don't absorb as much oil, and always read food labels to help you make healthier choices. The other thing as well, I think, is you were saying I want to be fitter. I want to be, you know, in terms of my job as well, my career. Yeah. That ain't helping. No. Whilst Alan digests the details of his hoagie horror story, it's time for 15 stone 12 Emma to have a generous portion of the truth. You said to me that you're having maybe two meals a day? Roughly. I think eat two meals a day in small portions that I have. We wanted to get to the bottom of what was really going on. Yeah. Shall we have a look at what's going into those two meals a day? OK. Back to that first night of surveillance and those chicken fajitas that Emma had rustled up, they're good to go and her stomach is ready to rumble. It's round one and Emma prepares to do battle. Seconds out, and that fajita barely touched the sides. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. Our champ is showing great staying power, even when she has to take one on the chin. That fajita didn't stand a fighting chance of survival. Two wraps down. Can she match Alan? Fajita for fajita. The fajita takes a blow, and Emma's appetite still hasn't been knocked out. Oh, no. <laughs> Round four and this supper is more heavyweight than the featherweight meal she claims she has. And all those calories will be sure to deliver a knockout punch below the belt. I was hungry that day. <laughs> <laughs> Two days later, Emma has a lunch date planned with friends. But Cameron has already sent out a few friend requests of his own. Oh, no! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I heard that you're meeting Emma for lunch. We are. So I was hoping one of you could wear this secret camera in the shirt. Yeah, I'll do that, yeah. I wondered why he was wearing a shirt. With Emma's friends on side and undercover, Cameron takes a ringside seat in order to keep tabs on all the tabletop action. <laughs> As Emma tucks into another mighty Mexican meal. 
I've just bought exactly what Emma had for lunch, so let's have a look. So we've got chicken fajita salad, and in there you've got sour cream guacamole, and here we've got nachos, loads of cheese, sour cream. This doesn't look good. I'm going to get it back to Anna. Emma, you are getting through a lot of food. So if you're saying I only have two meals a day, check out the meals. <laughs> Do you think you picked the healthy option there? I did actually go for the healthy option. The nachos, maybe not so much, but the salad was meant to be a healthy salad. Even said in the menu, healthy salad. OK, so you did go for the healthy option there. Yeah. So four fajitas you had yeah. in one meal. Were you aware of how many you ate? When I eat fajitas, I generally count them. Mm. And we generally have four each. OK, let's find out from our expert what that is doing to your weight. Oh, dear. <laughs> Those large portions of fajitas came to nearly 1,500 calories, oh. the same as Alan's hoagie. That's really not good. I didn't expect it to be that much because of all the, the vegetables in it. That's most of the calories you need in a day, mm -hmm. just in one meal. It's not good at all. You're just eating way too much, and you think you're making the healthy choice as well, but actually, not necessarily. I think we both kind of stumble on that one. And it was because it was home cooked as well. It was we cooked kind of, from scratch. We kind of thought that that would account for uh, less calories. Yeah. Imagine this. You're in the office, it's lunchtime, you're starving. So you go down to the canteen or nip off to the local shop and suddenly there before you is a smorgasbord of gorgeous food. The sights, the colours, the smells. Next thing you know, your good intentions have gone out of the window and you're at your desk stuffing your face. So the question is this, is there a way that we can stop our senses ruling our stomachs and ruining our waistlines? To find out, I've come to this busy Manchester office to meet food psychologist Dr Christy Ferguson. OK, so why are we in this office block? You know, in that working environment, we're all doing longer hours, we've got deadlines, demanding bosses. Yeah. So we're looking at the difference between pre-ordering and sort of impulse choices. Right. So if you decide what you're going to have for lunchtime in the morning, you know, when you've just had your breakfast, you're more likely to make healthier choices and therefore obviously consume less calories than if you actually wait until your lunchtime and you know what it's like, you're sort of faced with all the smells and the delicious looking food. And if you're starving, you're much more likely to have those unhealthy options. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, I would never think after breakfast, mm, let me just pre-think <laughs> about what I'm going to have for lunch. I mean, most people do do that sort of impulse thing. To put the theory to the test, we've separated these office workers into two groups and given them the same calorie control breakfast. They think they're taking part in a documentary about office team building, but Dr Christie is actually monitoring exactly what they eat. Immediately after breakfast, the green group are given the opportunity to pre-order their lunch. Whilst the orange group are put straight to work and will make their choices on impulse at lunchtime. So what we're anticipating is that the pre-order group are going to make healthier choices and therefore eat less calories. Very interesting. Boxes ticked, the menus are hot-footed over to Dr Christie and her colleague Tom. But how many people in the pre-order group will have made healthier choices? Find out later if a little pre-planning could go a long way in reducing our waistlines. Over the last five days, we've been tracking Lovebird's 22-year-old Emma and her 26-year-old boyfriend Alan from Edinburgh. They've asked us to solve the mystery of their ballooning bellies. I have tried absolutely everything possibly imaginable <laughs> to lose weight. And as the details of their sinful scoffing unfolds, they're facing the cold, harsh reality of what they've really been eating. Oh. <laughs> How can you put that in your system? We've already dished up one serving of evidence, but it's now time for 15 stone 12 Emma to have a second helping of the truth. Now, I've got a bit of a flashback, because when we met, you said to me, I'd say that my diet is as healthy as it can be. I've got plenty of veg, plenty of meat, plenty of fruit. Still standing by that? Um, judging by the tables and everything here, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Should we have a look at your worst day? Yeah. <laughs> it's Friday morning, and after missing breakfast, Emma opts for a healthy apple. 
Good work, Emma. My little apple. But that saintly snack hasn't satisfied the stomach, and away from the house cameras, Emma takes a pilgrimage to the heavenly gates of the Golden Arches. And that 590 calorie chili chicken sandwich is something she'll have to add to her confession. <laughs> She'd better pray our PIs don't find out about this one. Too late. Oh, no. oh dear. It's dinner time, and the virtuous apple is a distant memory, as Emma gets to grips with yet another wrap, this time chicken tikka, making this her second fast food hit of the day. <laughs> And this wrap attack is washed down with a large vodka and diet cola. That was just the glass of cola, yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> After dinner, she's off out again and heads straight to the pub for a spot of karaoke. <laughs> oh, no! And our PIs have got themselves the best seats in the house. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> they watch our lady in red sink the drink until the early hours. I'm just looking at the wine bottle and all. <laughs> and in total, she consumes over 626 liquid calories, including full fat cola, a shot of whiskey, and over three quarters of a bottle of wine. I think that's what they call letting your hair down. <laughs> <laughs> At 3.30am, our karaoke queen returns home and, before bed, manages to squeeze in an extra 510 calories with some fried rice. Oh, no. Not exactly a day of healthy eating, would you say, Emma? I don't even know where to begin <laughs> with that 24 hours. You, you started off really well with the apple. Yeah. It went a little bit pear-shaped from there, didn't it, bit. to be honest? To be honest, I didn't really take notes of the food because I was just focusing on the conversation. Fair enough. I think it is fair to say that you were really not focusing yeah. on what you were consuming that day. And I think Lynn can probably tell us the damage that was done. Oh. Go on, Lynn. <laughs> Emma, on that day, you got through 3,150 calories. Oh, no. Now, that's... <laughs> <laughs> one and a half days worth of food for an average woman. So, in effect, you've eaten half a day's worth of extra food. Now, if you did that every week, over a course of a month, mm -hmm. that's the same number of extra calories as... Not just one. Not just two box of eggs. Oh, my... Three box of eggs not four boxes oh, of eggs. Then no. these aren't any old eggs. These are... Oh. <laughs> oh, no. 26 chocolate eggs. Oh. That is really unexpected. That is not good at all. Emma's food diary before surveillance revealed she often skipped breakfast. If you're a breakfast skipper, you're more likely to reach for fatty, high-calorie foods throughout the day. Introduce a protein-rich breakfast, such as poached eggs on whole grain toast into your diet, as this will keep you fuller for longer and you'll be less likely to snack. Avoid sugary breakfasts. After the initial quick rise in blood sugar, you may experience a dip and you'll be desperate for a sweet refuel a few hours later. Around 70% of staff at this London plumbing firm down tools at lunchtime and settle for a bacon butty. But today we've rigged cameras in their work canteen. We asked the chef to dish up higher calorie fare, a spicy Mexican chilli and a roast beef Yorkshire pudding wrap. But will our workers be tempted by the new offerings or prefer their old favourite? This plumbing pro demonstrates a trick of the trade by making a snacho for a nacho. Oh, looks like they're all at it. Here's an office worker who knows how to control a leak. But with all that salt, his tank might need flushing out later. This young apprentice knows what he's doing, carrying out a personal inspection of potential work before getting on the job. What's this? Looks like you could have something for the complaints department. Morning, 
There's clearly nothing wrong with his overflow, but somebody might need to find his stopcock. Lunchtime over and the dish of the day was the 450 calorie chilli, with 33 servings going down the hatch. The 850 calorie Yorkshire Pud beef wrap trailed behind with seven, and only three people opted for a humble sandwich. Looks like there'll be some extra pipes to clean tomorrow. So far in our instant room, Dorman Allen's takeaway treats have come under the microscope. It's now time for him to take the stand and face the final piece of evidence. Now, when we met and I came to your house, you made the secret eater's pledge that you were not going to change your behaviour. Will you promise me? Promise. promise. You asked me to help me solve the mystery of your yep. weight gain and your weight gain. I need you to help me solve a mystery of my own. Can we just have a look at this? Mm. Alan's food diary mentioned a certain drink he likes, and today it appears he's all out and needs to stock up. So, he's off to the shops. Hmm. And our PI Duncan isn't far behind. Well, I've just followed Alan round the shop. <laughs> He's bought a quad pack of colas. Um, be interesting to see what Alan has to say about that. No sooner is Alan through the door, but he's sent straight back out again. See if the diet ones are available. He's keeping our PIs busy today. Well, this is interesting. I've just followed Alan back to the shop. <laughs> the only thing he's bought this time is another quad pack of two litre bottles of cola, but this time it's Diet Coke. As he returns home with another eight litres of pop, it's time for Alan to go to work. And boy, during surveillance, did he work. But away from the prying eyes of the house cameras, will this fizz fanatic go back to full fat when he thinks no one is watching? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> we got ya. Alan's in this pub behind me, and there's some great sounds coming out of his mouth. But unfortunately, what's going into it are two full fat cokes. You told me you only had one. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. During surveillance, Alan guzzled his way through over five litres of cola. The big question is, what is his normal tipple, full fat or diet? It's time to pop the bubble of this secret eater's mystery. Huh, full sugar or no sugar with your cola? Which is it? Um, well, I, I, I will go for the full sugar. Yes, you cheeky little beggar, you would, because you walked into the set with one. <laughs> Why do you go for the full sugar pop? I want the energy. From ah. to last. OK, we need to talk to Lynn about what that sugar hit is doing. Yeah. Alan, during surveillance, when you were at home, in terms of your diet drink, you only got through around 39 calories. If, however, you would normally drink the standard cola, in that volume, you would have got through over 1,550 calories just in drink. Are you surprised to hear the difference in the calories between the two colours? Very surprised between the diet and the regular colour. I thought it was just like a false thing to, you know, sell the diet coach say, oh, it's got less in it, but now I really see that it does actually have a considerable It really does. I mean, the, the diet colours really do have negligible calories mm. in. Yeah. With all the evidence stacked up against Emma and Alan, it's time for them to discover the difference between what they think they eat and what they actually eat. Emma. Your food diary said you were getting through around 2,170 calories a day. Mm -hmm. But during surveillance, you actually got through... 2,600 calories a day, which over a course of a week works out to be two extra days' worth of food each week. That's not good. It's really not good. Alan, from your food diaries, you were getting through around 2,500 calories a day. But during surveillance, 
you actually got through 2,450 calories a day. So you were mm -hmm. eating less than what you were eating when you completed the food diaries. If, however, you were actually drinking the sugary drinks rather than the diet drinks that you did during surveillance, it would have brought your average intake up to 2,900 calories a day. Now, we weighed you at the beginning of surveillance and at the end of surveillance, and you've lost two pounds just in those four days. So let's talk about the future, because now that you've seen some of your habits and some of your pitfalls, how do you feel about moving forward? Now that I've seen it all, it's starting to make me think, hang on, I can actually do this. It's all fixable. So you're the girl that can have the power to actually, you know, change your life. Definitely, yeah. And Alan, have we armed you at all with some more information today? You give me a severe kick up the arse. <laughs> I wonder whether maybe you both needed it. Yeah. I definitely think we both did. Yeah, we did. I have just one more thing to ask you. Alan, are you a secret eater? Yes, I'm a secret eater. Emma, are you a secret eater? Definitely, I am a secret eater. <laughs> After seeing the true extent of their secret eating, Emma and Alan have agreed to adopt a healthy eating plan. In order to start shifting some pounds, Emma is going to have to stick to 1,900 calories a day. She must reduce her monster portion sizes and introduce more whole grains, fruit and vegetables into her diet. Alan needs to reduce his calorie consumption to 2,100 calories a day. He must eat three regular meals and sugar-free alternatives instead. These simple changes should give Emma and Alan a fighting chance to lose around one to two pounds a week. Earlier, we set up an experiment at this internet hosting company in Manchester. The staff here think they're taking part in a documentary about office teamwork. But we're actually secretly testing the scientific theory that if we pre-plan our lunch, we're more likely to choose the healthier option and consume fewer calories. There's research that shows if we buy on impulse, if we yeah. select an impulse, we're being ruled by our stomachs. The green groups were asked to pre-order their lunch immediately after breakfast, whilst the orange group chose from exactly the same menu on impulse at lunchtime. I might even push it further, go for a Snickers. Oh, yeah. Oh, that girl's really going for it. Food psychologist Dr Christy Ferguson has been busy processing the data and weighing up the leftovers so she can see which group ate the most. Time to reveal the results to our unsuspecting lab rats. You obviously thought that you were taking part in a documentary about team building. You've actually been taking part in Secret Eaters. <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Christy Ferguson. OK, so there's been like previous research done where they tested whether if you pre-order your food or if you just impulsively eat which one you're going to make healthier decisions. And what they found, obviously, is if you're pre-planning, you're actually going to make healthier choices and eat less calories. So that's what we were testing out today. So the big question was, did you prove the science, OK? This is the impulse group. That is. This is the pre-order group. So the pre-order group is averaging around 1,000 calories per person. The impulsive group, you had about 1,700 calories, so that was on average. 68% difference between the pre-order group and the impulsive group is huge. Well, the take a message from this experiment today is before having a meal, I really should prepare it rather than go in there all guns blazing and just take what I want because I'll most likely overdo it and take more than I actually need. From today, we've taken the fact that if you do pre-order, you do prepare, you do think about what you're going to eat, you will eat better. So there you go. The science has been proved once again. If you pre-think, 
pre-pack or pre-order your food. In other words, prepare what you're going to eat for the day. You will end up eating significantly less. And let's face it, that has got to be good for our waistlines. Five weeks ago, devoted couple Emma and Alan were desperate to solve the mystery of their widening waistlines. I've tried absolutely everything possibly imaginable <laughs> to lose weight and I can't find a way to solve it. They agreed to go under round-the-clock surveillance for five days and we had two private investigators tracking all their snacking. I was hoping one of you could wear this secret camera in the shirt. It's now time to see if Emma and Alan have become champions for change. As soon as we got home, I think the first thing I did was went into the fridge and chucked out the majority of fatty things. As far as shopping went, I was still buying the same ingredients, but it was portion sizes that mainly changed. I have made the, the switch from regular to diet. On occasion, I'll probably have a glass of full of sugar, but I have made the conscious switch to go to the diet word on drinks. Since I've been on the eating plan, I have been quite a bit more active. If I know that I look good, I look fit, that I know that other people will perceive me that way. I think we're definitely equally kind of pushing each other to eat healthily. We've definitely kept each other in check. I don't see it as a diet, I see it as a definite lifestyle change. I've not cut out anything. Cut down on portions, maybe added a bit more veg. It's easier than a diet. The weigh-in is still to come, but remember, it's not just Emma and Alan's secret eating that we've been spying on. Come on, stop delaying. Last year, it was estimated that Britain spent a mouth-watering £32 billion when dining out. And a survey reported that women are 25% more likely than men to order dessert. So tonight, we've rigged our hidden cameras in a restaurant where we're flying the flag for the Great British Pud. We've got a special tonight, just for tonight only, all your, uh, your British puddings. Yeah. On the menu, there are some old-school favourites. But will it be the pudding princes or the dessert divas who are crowned head of the class? That's it. That's got a bit of everything. This star pupil is the studious type, doing his homework before taking a slice of the sweet stuff. Real. This promising young student knows what she wants. She should have a bright future ahead of her. Our star pupil's back. He has an unrivaled attendance record and a second piece of cake. Yeah. Can I start with it? Uh, please. Yeah. Thank you. This man might need to see the school nurse. Yeah, I'm going to test cake. <laughs> yeah, <it does>. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got cream for it, so you're all right. Here's a guy doing some last-minute cramming. Set. Okay. Set. But why choose one pud when you can have two, or three, or four? Final scores on the doors revealed that the ladies only just outnumbered the men. 29 women made a play for our puds, whilst the gents came in second at 26. The proof is in the pudding. When it comes to desserts, we all have a sweet tooth that needs satisfying. Five weeks later, and back in Scotland with Emma and Alan. They've been following a healthy eating plan set out by our dietitian Lynn Garton after facing up to the truth about their secret eating. You got through 3,150 calories. Oh, no. If they've stuck to it, both should have lost weight. Oh, no. Here we go. Scales time. <laughs> what are you thinking? <sighs> I'm scared. First to step up to the scales is Emma, who five weeks ago weighed in at nearly 15 stone 12. Right. It's 15 four. Yeah. Well done, man. nice. <laughs> Will partner Alan be just as successful? He started out at 16 four. <laughs> Come on, stop delaying. 15 10. 
Both lost weight. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Another high five. <laughs> Another high five. <laughs> Between them, Emma and Alan have lost a respectable 16 pounds in five weeks. I've noticed quite a massive change in my confidence. I'm getting an hourglass figure back, which I used to have. It actually is really, really amazing to feel this good about myself again. And now they're putting their weighty ways in the past, what does the future hold for our devoted duo? This one decided to be all romantic. <laughs> the whole get down on one knee, Emma, will you be my wife? And she kind of looked at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> Get off the ground. Stand up, please. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. So I stood up and said, yes. 